Okay, before we get started with the talk, um, just a few announcements to our um, attendee participants today. Um, for those of you who have been around with, uh, been with us since the morning or since yesterday, even, you will know how this works, uh, but there might be some uh, new people here as well, so let me explain something. Um, if you have purchased a ticket and you're watching us from YouTube Live, we recommend that you switch over to Zoom so you can ask questions and chat and use the chat feature. Uh, you should have the links to that in uh, in your Zoom ticket. Um, for everybody who is here with us on Zoom, um, at the end of the talk, uh, we will have a time for Q&A. And if you have a question, please raise your hand by clicking the participants button at the bottom of your screen and then the raise hand button in the panel that will pop out. Uh, えっと、could somebody in Zoom please uh, raise your hand just for testing purposes? Okay, uh, thank you. And you can, of course, ask questions in chat as well if you don't have a camera or don't have a microphone. Uh, and I will then ask the question instead. If you are watching us from YouTube Live, uh, you can, of course, tweet about this talk, tweet about this conference. Please use the hashtag, hashtag PyConJP. Or for this uh, talk in particular, use PyCon, hashtag PyCon underscore two. Uh, thank you very much. We're looking forward to your comments and impressions. Uh, now, um, Chen Ling -san, um, you should have gotten a little uh, statement uh, to read before your talk. Yes. Um, yes. But, so uh, if we could just for mic check. Uh, to check that the levels of the microphone and everything, the sound is okay. If you could read this now, please. Uh, so, because I, I couldn't find that document, so can I just read the slides? Like spatial booths, all the spatial booths you can get. It's how the company use Python for this. Is it? Um, it's, okay. There's there's a reason why <laughs> there's a reason why we make you read this, and it mic check is one big reason, but there's also uh, okay. So uh, can you send me the documents for... link? Absolutely. If you give me one second. Uh, I mean, can, can you give me the documents link so I can read that? Yes. Yes. Um, I have to find the link myself first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think that's the one. I will share it with you on Zoom or uh, Slack. Uh, okay. Where are you? Oh, okay. So, okay. So I will share it with you on Zoom. I sent you a private message on Zoom. Okay. Okay, I got it. Should, should I use my screen or I just read it? Just you, you just have to read it. Uh, okay. So uh, my name is Chen Ling Yang. The title of my presentation is Your Escape Plan from NumPy and Saison. My presentation will be in English. The, pre the presentation material are in English, and I will publish the uh, presentation materials. I agree to having my picture taken during my presentation. I will compile with the uh, PyCon Japan's Code of Conduct. Yeah, thank you very much. No uh, problem. Staff no kata, Okay, 
I don't know. Okay, so it looks like everything is fine, so we can start. Hi, Elmas. Okay, let's get started, everyone. Uh, welcome, everybody, to uh, Jen Linian's uh, presentation about your escape plan from NumPy and SciSign. Uh, Jen Ling, uh, take it away. Okay, thank you. Hello, uh, thank you for having me at PyCon Japan 2020. It's truly my honor to be here. And today's talk will be your escape plan from NumPy and Saisang. Here's a little bit about myself. My name is Chen Lin Yang, and you can find me on my GitHub account, C-L-Y-A-N-G. I'm a Taiwanese and live in Taipei now, and currently working for a cybersecurity company called SciCraft Japan. I'm also a member of machine learning team. So basically all my daily life is dealing with thousands of hundreds uh, logs from the endpoints everywhere uh, around the world. So it also that's also the main reason uh, why I want to share this because I, I deal with all this data with Python and NumPy. Okay, so before we start, here are one very quick question for you. Uh, assuming that you have a very large NumPy array and you want each uh, element to multiply itself eight times. Which of the following code do you think runs faster? Is it A, the power function of NumPy, or B, x times times A, or C, x times x, and then repeat four times? I will give you a few seconds to think about it. Okay, time's up. So the answer is C the most naive one, x times x, and then repeat four times. And in order to prove it, I also write a very small benchmark code to, to see uh, the actual execution time of all, all uh, those three options. So as you can see over here, uh, the power function of NumPy and x times times a, they both took about two seconds to finish. But for the last solution, the most naive one, you use x times x, and then it only took about 0 0.4 seconds. So it's about five times faster than the previous two. Yeah, that's amazing, right? So uh, this lesson teaches us that sometimes the, uh, the most naive uh, solution might, might be even faster than you think. And also, but there's a catch. Uh, the last solution, there will be a very, very small difference between uh, this one and the previous two. Uh, the difference is about 10 to the power of negative 20. So as you can see, that's a very small uh, difference. But so unless you are doing the scientific computation, otherwise I, I believe the last one can help you a lot and it gives you about five times faster in performance. Okay, so why not sign song? Right. In this slide, at least uh, if you are, ever uh, encounter a performance issue with uh, NumPy code, you might ask your friends, colleagues, or teachers how to improve your uh, NumPy code. Most likely the answer you will get is that, why not try on Saison? So in uh, this page, I just list some pros and cons regarding to Saison. Let's have a look on advantage first. If you use utilize Saison, of course, you can use all those third-party C libraries. And in the most of time, C code runs much faster than Python's code. And also it allows you to release the global interpreter logs. So your multi-threaded program can run even faster. And still you can have the runtime check for the very common issue like the boundary checks or the memory uh, management issue provided by the upper layer uh, Python. So you don't have to deal with it by yourself. And last point is that the Saison syntax is very similar to Python one. So you can very easily to pick it up and learn it. However, there are uh, some dis uh, disadvantage regarding to that. The first thing I can say is that you have to handle the memory by yourself. Because if you are using uh, the uh, malloc function in your Saison code, then all the memory, me memory management should be done by yourself. So you have to remember to release the memory after you, uh, your code. Otherwise you will suffer very serious uh, memory leak issue. And also uh, if you want to get the ultimate performance, 
writing the C code and low level intrinsics cannot be avoided. And sometimes it's very painful. So basically all you have to do is write like something like this one. And it's really painful because uh, the code on the screen is rolled by myself uh, during my work. Okay, so let's move on to today's example. This example will be used as a benchmark code for the rest of uh, this talk. So please have a look on it. Uh, if, you are, if you are not new to machine learning, you must know what softmax function is. Uh, it's, the formula is just like the one I show on the slides. And don't worry, I'm not going to explain it in a mathematical way. All you have to do, uh, all you have to remember is that it's a number divided by a bunch of, uh, the sum of a bunch of numbers, and that will be enough. And as you can see the formula, uh, it's, it is very easy to implement by programming language. However, if you really try to implement in Python, uh, like, uh, just like the formula uh, I show on the screen, you will easily encounter the numerical issues. And in computer science, we, we call this issue uh, underflow or overflow issue. On the next page, I will give you an underflow uh, example to demonstrate it. To solve this kind of issue, uh, there's a mathematical trick called log sum exponential, and this will help you to prevent the overflow or underflow issues. Okay, so here's the underflow example. Let's say uh, this part of denominator, the sum of this part denominator will be 13421772a. And the last part is uh, it's, uh, reciprocal. So it's just uh, 1, 3, 4, 2, uh, 1 divided by 1, 3, 4, 2, 1, 7, 7, 2, 8. OK, so then what will happen if you are trying to add these two parts together? Here's a one very simple code to demonstrate it. So the variable a is just the number uh, I just described. And then you try to print the sum of uh, a and a's reciprocal uh, for three times. As you can find the result over here, it's exactly the same as A. So the, this part will just be ignored. And you might think this not, might not be a very big deal because the, uh, the reciprocal of A is very, very small. But imagine if you are doing a scientific computation, for example, like uh, doing the Markov chain, uh, the input data will be a list of very small probability. So after you, uh, after a specific location, uh, in my case, like this one, and every single small value after this location will be ignored, and that will affect your final result significantly. So to solve this problem, a very simple trick called log sum exponential can be used. And this, uh, the, this formula shown on the slide, uh, is mathematically equal to the result of the softmax. And don't worry again, because I'm not going to prove it over here, but you can find the answer on the internet very easily. So by applying this formula and translate it into the Python code, you can see the final result over here. So you, uh, as the result shows, there are very small difference between this result and the, the result on the previous page. The smaller value is preserved. Otherwise, so uh, it, it proves that uh, if you apply log sum exponential trick, it will help you to maintain your uh, calculation results. Okay, so for some of you might uh, already know, SciPy already has log sum exponential function. Why would you rebuild your own wheel? That's a very good question. The answer to that is that the SciPy's function is normally built for the general purpose usage. So it will contain a lot of checks in order to, uh, preserve, uh, to handle the input and output data in the correct form. However, in the real world scenario, you know what your data is, you know what your data look like. So you can actually rewrite a function uh, not only to avoid a, a lot of additional checks, but also give you another chance to apply some performance uh, improvement library to boost your code. So in my case, and also in the rest of this talk, I will assume all the in input data will be one dimensional array. Okay, so let's have a look. How do we implement the log sum exponential in NumPy? Uh, 
the code is just shown on the screen. So ba basically, based on my scenario, the input data will be just one dimensional array. So log sum exponential can be implemented as follows. As you can see, it only took three lines of code to finish it. So it's very easy to do that. I will leave about a few seconds for you to view the code. So after we implement our own version of NumPy, we have to compare it with, with the original one. So here's the benchmark code. I just wrote the, uh, our own implementation and then called the built-in SciPy function. The result is on the right of the slide. As you can see, our version is about 0.5 seconds faster than, than original one. And some of you might think 0.5 seconds is not a lot. But however, think if you're thinking about uh, coding call this function um, one million times a day, then it will, it will uh, help you to save about half a million seconds. That's not bad, right? Okay, so let's move on to today's first solution, uh, Kupai. Kupai is an open source project developed by a Japanese company, and it provides NumPy compatible ND array on uh, CUDA. So basically it means that you can utilize all your GPU powers. And it also compatible with the existing CUDA kernels. So you don't have to waste all your hard work in previous CUDA kernel. You can just import it and use it. And also it provides many NumPy equivalent function for you to, to use it. So you can minimize your code refactoring effort. But please remember, there are still some difference between CuPy and NumPy. So please check on their website and they, uh, their, the page is very well written and describe the major difference between CuPy and NumPy. And the last thing I, I would like to remind you is that moving data between CPU and GPU is very expensive. So please use it wisely. Otherwise, instead of uh, improve your uh, core performance, it might drag your performance a lot. So how do we implement CuPy in, uh, in uh, sorry, how do we implement log sum exponential in CuPy? Uh, it's very, very easy. Uh, all you have to do is import CuPy as CP. And then you can use uh, all the, uh, you, you can try to use the NumPy function uh, under CP. Uh, there's one thing I would like to uh, remind you is that this one, this is very critical one. So you have to compile your existing NumPy array by using CuPy.array. And then Kupai will help you to move your data from physical memory to graphic cost memory. And then it will perform all the calculation. So after we, uh, we run this code, the result is pretty amazing. The, the running time is cutting from 6.7 seconds down to 1.6 seconds. So it's about five times faster than the original SciPy version. Okay, so now moving on to the second solution, Numba. Numba is a very popular NumPy and Python code uh, boosting solution. And it is also backed by many large companies and organizations. The approach Numba use is just in time technology. So basically it means it will translate a subset of your own Python or your uh, NumPy code into low level machine code and run faster. It also uh, provides uh, the ability to utilize the uh, both CPU and GPU power. And one of the best thing Numba has is that it also supports OpenMP. So it means that you can uh, parallel your uh, code very easily. The highlight of uh, Numba is that it provides near zero code modification. So all you have to do is to put a very special decorator at JIT. Uh, before the function you would like to speed up and then Numba will do the magic for you. And currently Numba only works best with the functions, not classes. So if you have a lot of classes want to improve its performance by Numba, I will suggest you not, not, not right now because it's still in a very early development. And another advantage about Numba is that it has a very large user community. So it means that uh, if you have any question, you can easily find the answer on the Stack Overflow. To use Numba, two modes you have to know, the no Python mode and also the option mode. So in the no Python mode, 
you Numba will help you to get rid of the Python uh, global interpreter log. So it will allow you to uh, get the most performance out of your code. However, not every NumPy code is supported in no Python mode. So you have to look up the uh, documentation in Numba's page. Luckily, it's very well written, so it shouldn't be that hard to find the main pin. So if the no Python mode doesn't work, don't worry, you still have to, you still can fall back to the object mode to give it a try. And to use the OpenMP with Numba, you have to use it under Node.it code. So here's a very simple, simple example. Uh, all you have to do is uh, use it in under the Node.jit mode, and then uh, you just change your original code from the range to p range. So just one character change, and then Numba will help you to parallel this calculation. So that's pretty amazing, right? So how exactly we uh, implement the uh, log sum exponential by Numba? It's much, much easier than, than you expect. All you have to do is put these two spatial decorator at JIT or at NJIT. And the rest of the code is exactly the same as the one we implement in uh, NumPy. And the result is on the right. As you can see, the uh, no Python mode with Numba is, uh, provide, is about six seconds to finish. However, in the JIT mode, it, it took 6 sec, uh, 6.72 seconds. So it's about 0 0.02 seconds slower than the original SciPy's code. So you have to remember, uh, if you want try if if you want to try to apply all these solutions uh, to improve your code, please remember to write the benchmark code because sometimes it might give you even slower result rather than faster one. Okay, so let's move on to the last solution, uh, Python. So in Python, Python is a very active uh, development uh, project written by a French developer. And it has a very fast growing community. So that's why I want to give you uh, some introduction regarding to that. And unlike the Numba, which used the just-in-time technology, Python used ahead-of-time compiling technology. So basically, it means that you will try to uh, translate part of your Python and NumPy code into C++ code, and then try to utilize modern uh, compiler uh, technology to compile it and optimize it into the un, uh, very low level machine code and run faster. And it also supports a subset of Python and non-Py function and works on Python uh, 2.7 and Python 3.6 to 3.8. And just like Numba, all you have to do is put a very special decorator before the function you want to uh, boost. And also it supports uh, OpenMP, so you can also do the PRAN trick in Python. So how do we uh, implement log sum exponential in Python? So uh, normally it takes two steps. So the first step, all you have to do is write the Python code as usual. So here's the uh, example code. So this part of code is exactly the same as the NumPy code again. And all you have to do is put a very uh, spatial decorator, the hashtag Python x for, and then your function name, and the data type of the, of the input value, and that's it. So once you edit this file and save it, all you have to do, sorry, all you have to do is compile the file you just written. So here's the one very long command to compile this code. And you can also just do this one, the Python, and then your file name. It will also do the trick. The reason I use this long command because is that I want to uh, give some uh, compiling flex to improve its performance. So after you finish uh, you, the first step and compiling it without any errors, all, all you have to do is import the just compile module and run it. So in this, in this, uh, the second code, I'm using a, uh, I just import the uh, compiled module and then call the function as usual. And here's the result. As you can see, it took about 5.4 seconds to run. So if you can recall, the original sci-fi function is, took about 6.7. Uh, 
And the uh, noon bus result is about six seconds with no Python mode. And in Python, it can give you extra performance boost. It can, uh, the running time of it is about 5.4 seconds. So that's about 20% faster than the original uh, SciPy's function. So uh, basically, let's all, let's all, uh, I just introduced three different types of solution that can improve your uh, non pies performance. So right now you might want to ask, which is better? So uh, before we describe that, I would like to show, uh, tell you the ben the some background regarding to the benchmark. All the benchmark in the previous page is run on a bare metal machine with an Intel CPU Zion, Zion CPU on, with it. 256 gigabyte. And it also comes with a GeForce GTS 1080 Ti graphic card. The Python version I use is 3.6.9. And all the library information and version information you can find in these slides. Okay, so in this slide, I just put all the results in the previous page in, into a, a bar chart so you can compare it by yourself. So the answer is quite clear. If you, have a G, uh, if you have a GPU or even better, multiple GPUs, please give it a uh, Coupi a try because it can easily boost your uh, uh, core performance uh, greatly. In my case, it's five times. So it's just a no burner and it's very easy to, uh, to transit from the NumPy to Coupi. If you don't have any GPU, don't worry, you, you still have the options. So in this case, Python gives the most power of the uh, uh, the boosting performance. So as you can see, it will give you like 20% faster than the original uh, SciPy's implementation. Uh, that's not bad for just you know, a few lines of code change and you, you can boost your code greatly. So I can call it a day. Okay, so uh, at, the in, at the end of this talk, uh, I would like to give you my decision tree regarding to the Coupi, Numba, and Python. So the question was starting with, uh, do you have CPU? If the answer is yes, and then the following question will be, do you need to run CUDA kernels? If the answer is still yes, and then I will suggest you to use CUPI. If the answer is no, then the, the other question would be, uh, do you need to uh, also run the CPU uh, task with you? If the answer is yes, and then I will suggest you to run use Noomba, otherwise, uh, you can use Coupi. And what will happen if you don't have any GPU? Don't worry, you still have uh, options. And the question itself will be very easy. Do you like compiler? Do, so basically, uh, do you like to dealing with compiler? If the answer is no, then please use Numba because it will give you the minimum compiling error or trans uh, trans translation error for you. Otherwise, if you are a geek and like to deal with the compiler, compiler flag, or uh, all those compiler errors, and then uh, Python will be your best choice. And in my own experience, uh, I will use Python to get the most uh, CPU power as many times as possible. So at the very end of this talk, I would like to give you three takeaways. First, if you have GPU, please do try uh, CoolPy because it's just a no-brainer and can improve your uh, uh, non-pies code greatly. And you, if you don't have GPU, don't worry. Uh, I will suggest you to try Numba first. The main reason I will suggest you to try Numba first is that Numba supports more NumPy function than Python. So in my own experience, uh, my daily life work, I will try to uh, improve my NumPy code with Numba and no Python in no Python mode. If it works perfectly, and then I will try to convert this code into Python to get more performance out of it. And the last takeaway would be, uh, please remember each solution, they support different numbers of NumPy's function. So uh, please do remember to read the uh, uh, documentation on each solution's website. You can find all the supported NumPy function on, on their website. And also, uh, you might want to ask, how do I know if it's, the function is supported or not? Uh, actually, it's very easy, because uh, if it, the function is not supported, 
uh, it will just your program will just dies. So you will know it immediately. And also, if A doesn't work, B might work. So in my own uh, experience, uh, sometimes Kupai doesn't work, but Numbas works for for specific function, or maybe Numba works and then Python doesn't work. So I would suggest you to use the, a mixture of solution. So in, in the real world scenario, I always use like Kubai with Numba or Kubai with PyThread to get most power of my GPU and CPU. So that's pretty much uh, my talk today. Thank you. And because right now is the uh, pandemic uh, for uh, COVID-19, I hope you guys stay safe. Thank you. And do you have any questions? Right, yeah, thank you very much, Jen, and uh, great uh, talk, very interesting. Um, all right, if you have a question for him, please raise your hand in Zoom, in the participants tag, uh, if you want to ask the question yourself. And there's a question in chat, um, you can still raise your hand and I will call you out, but the question in chat, um, in Python, directives are given with the uh, like pound sign, so it can be run by usual Python regarding them as comments. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So you cannot run this code in Python because you will just treat it as a comment. So you have to use Python to compile it. So uh, in my slide, I will give you a very long compiling command to compile it. So so basically, you can try always try it on Python and space, and then your file name to compile the file and you will compile as a module and then you can import it. Yeah, and there's a, it's not a question, but it's a comment that I uh, like and I agree with the decision, the decision tree that you made. Uh, that was very useful um, to see Thank the, you. on one screen what, what's going on and what to use. And nobody's raising their hand, so I will use this chance to ask a question myself. And okay. you, you, mentioned multiple times that all these different uh, tools have different levels of support for different uh, parts of NumPy, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was wondering like when something is not supported, uh, it obviously, I assume it errors or it crashes or something. And I was oh, wondering yeah. how, the, how the error reporting compares between the tools. Like We're talking to does this one three tool have much, does one tool have a much better error handling or like reporting or something like that? No, the, the program will just uh, throw up some exception and your program will just dies. And so you will immediately know this function is not supported. Okay, yeah, thank you. And in my own experience, there's a, a one very simple trick in, uh, in my own experience. If your NumPy function is involving with the axis, A-X-I-S, axis, this mm -hmm. argument, most of this, uh, I think uh, this three uh, solution does not support it very well. So normally uh, the, the major issue I will uh, face is that uh, the input data with uh, uh, very uh, multiple dimensions. And then I try to convert the metric and then I will have the issue with that. Yes, I was also, yeah, sort of related that I was also wondering with, um, I think it was Python where you have to explicitly give it a input type, right? Yes. Um, I assume if you call that function with the wrong type, it will just crash. Yeah, it will just crash. But uh, there's okay. one very nice thing uh, regarding to Python because you can uh, give uh, multiple uh, decorator with the same function. So for example, if you cannot expect the input data is integer or float, you can just declare twice in front of the function. And then this function will is able to take both integer and float. Okay, yeah, that, okay, that sounds, yeah, that sounds great. Um, yeah. And it looks like we are just about out of time. So we will finish here. Um, mm -hmm. Again, thank you very much. Uh, no Jenny, problem, thank you very much. Talk. Uh, thank you. We can get some more aids in chat, uh, everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, so uh, what's going to happen next is that, well, actually right now at 3.20, the special booth tour starts again, like, like yesterday. So if you have a PyCon ticket, uh, you can join that. 
and check out all our special booths. Um, after that, if you want the next talk in English, that will be at 4 p.m. in room number one. Tetsuo Koyama will talk about Jupyter Notebooks and how to plot some data, which sounds very interesting. Uh, so make sure to check that out. 